Well, good morning, everyone. All right, that was kind of weak. Jesus is going to be upset with you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> all right, that's what I want to hear. It is so good to see you all this morning. Uh, we come here to praise and worship our Father in heaven. So won't you please stand with us? And I want you singing loud and proud and letting the Lord just hear you this morning. We're going to tear this roof off, okay? Turn your hands together this morning. Come on. We're going to let God fight our battles this morning. When all I see is a battle, you see my victory.
Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. This morning, in just a few minutes, we're going to be celebrating the baptism of, of one of our teens, and this will be the sixth baptism that we've had since Palm Sunday, and we've used this as an opportunity for us to affirm the basics of our Christian faith, and so um, we're going to sing again in just a minute, but um, I'd like for us to join together in uh, stating and proclaiming the Apostles' Creed, this is a creed that goes back to the first or second century. It affirms the basics of what we believe as followers of Jesus. So join me now 
uh, as we join together in um, proclaiming this. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church Universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. All right. We're going to go ahead and dismiss Peyton and Pastor Kevin and Crystal to get ready for the baptism. And let's, let's continue to worship the Lord together.
our heads for prayer this morning. Shall we pray? Lord, we quiet our hearts this morning in your presence. We thank you for your never failing love for us. It is a love that was displayed so clearly as Jesus laid down his life for us. The cross is the picture of your unfailing love. Thank you, Lord, that you sent your Son to be our Savior. Thank you that with all of the things that are going on in our world today, your love for us is a sure foundation that we cling to each day, knowing that we can trust you, that you are faithful, that you've said you'd never leave us or forsake us. So Lord, we are so grateful for the faithfulness of your spirit come to dwell within us, guides us and encourages us each day. Thank you for the beauty of this world that you've created. All creation sings your praises. We're grateful for all of your creation. Lord, we lift our, our hearts, our voices this morning in prayer for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them in their suffering. Be with those who have fled their homes. Protect those who are in the middle of battle. Be with those who may be hungry and struggling today. Pray for peace in Ukraine. Lord, we pray that your spirit would be at work wherever in our world today that there is suffering. We know there are hungry people. We know there are homeless people. And we ask that we would be channels of your blessing to the world we would be faithful in carrying out your commandment to be peacemakers and to feed those who are hungry, to extend your healing grace to those who are struggling, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world. Help us to do that. Now, Lord, we pray that you would be with Peyton today and his family. Thank you that on this his birthday, he can give testimony to his new birth in Jesus Christ. We pray you to be close to him today. Our Lord, it's good to be together and to join in singing your praises, to worship your name. Thank you that you know who we are. You know what we're going through. You haven't promised that you'll make everything just totally okay, but you've promised to be with us no matter what we face in life. And so, Lord, we are grateful. 
that we can come to you and know you are a God who hears and answers our prayers. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, I am Peyton Fun. Um, I started coming to this church for the caravan program. And ever since then, I've just continued to keep coming back to this church. And now I am a teen in the youth group. All right, Peyton. So when was the time that you decided to begin your relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Um, it was a weekend at Fall Retreat with youth group. Um, the theme of the fall retreat was transformed, and I feel like on that weekend I was transformed and I felt closer to God, especially that 90 minutes of alone time with Christ. I felt like I had got so much closer to Him, and I have gained confidence to be able to talk to Him without having to worry, and that even though I don't think he's listening. He always is. How has how has your life been changed and transformed since that time at Fall um, Retreat? I kind of feel like I'm better at like if my friends get are down about themselves, that I can cheer them up, and um, I feel like I have better because when I, before this I was it was easy to get me emotionally and mentally, but. I feel like ever since I came to know God, that he's made, made me mentally stronger and emotionally stronger to help me get through those tough times a little bit easier than when I used to be without him. I'm choosing to be baptized today because it is like, I've had a rough past with Christ. So um, I feel like I've heard about being baptized is kind of like a rebirth thing. And I feel like, it, I get rebirth that it would help me get a better connection fully understanding of God and also a part of it is it is also on my birthday I'm like since it will be my spiritual birthday and my birthday I just felt like I should go all in and do it on this day my favorite Bible verse is um Proverbs 3 5 and 6 I when I joined caravans I think it's like we always were saying caravans it is let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So, um, to anyone who hasn't been baptized before or has taken their Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I would say choose a day and just spend the entire day with God and you'll see how much your life will change when you go with God. And I would also like to give a shout out to my mom and dad because all the tough times that I've had, they've helped me go through it. And God kept giving them encouragement and me encouragement to keep pushing through and not just give up. So anyone who has not been baptized or hasn't taken their Jesus as the Lord and Savior, they sh you guys should, it's, it's really great. Um, just remember, Jesus always loves you, no matter what you do. Well, this is definitely a, a very special day. Um, it's Paige's birthday, so I, I think it's going to be fitting that after we baptize him that we all sing happy birthday to him. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's like a given. Yeah. Not in Spanish, yeah, in the youth group we sing it in Spanish. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll sing happy birthday to him, but it's, it's really special that it's, it's his physical birthday, but today 
um, this is going to be his, his spiritual birthday, the, the moment when he died to himself and is reborn into the family of God, into the kingdom of God. And so we are, we're so excited about, um, about your decision that you're making, Peyton. And um, I got three, three questions for you, okay? All right, question number one. Will you be baptized in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and do you believe that he saves you now? Yes. And will you strive to follow him all the days of your life and do your best to love him and to love those around you with his love? Yes. Well, based on your profession of faith, Peyton, and based on your willingness to follow him, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's great. I'm so proud of Peyton. All right, we are going to go ahead and dismiss our children, um, age four through the second or fourth grade. Uh, kids can be dismissed at this time. We appreciate our children's workers. They're great. They're fantastic. And as they're going, if you would like to turn to our scripture for this morning, we're continuing on through the book of Acts, and so today uh, we're in Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 6. We're going to read that in just a, just a few minutes. Um, while you're kind of getting that scripture in front of you, or we'll stand in just a minute to, to read that, I actually have an announcement to make that's, um, I don't know, it may turn out to be a little bit sad. Um, so we... we Crystal announced on to our teens on Wednesday night that uh, they're looking for a youth pastor in Bel Air, Maryland, and uh, she's applying for that, and it's looking pretty good, actually, that, I mean, actually, I don't know how, you, it's actually looking pretty bad, I don't know how exactly to say that, <laughs> but um, we want to let you know so you can be praying for her. Um, probably a decision will be made in the next couple of weeks, and so she's seeking God's direction, and the Bel Air Church is seeking God's direction. And please, um, please lift her up in prayer and uh, and remember remember her as as she seeks God's direction. So, uh, I guess, kind of having announced that, the message is about being attentive to God. And uh, that's certainly what Crystal's doing these days, is trying to hear the voice and direction of God. And it is what we all, what we all want to be doing. So we're going to try to be real practical today. hope we're always practical. But how do we pay attention to what God is trying to say to us? Like, how do we hear? How do we know what he wants us to do, what he doesn't want us to do? And so how do we follow um, his voice and his how do we discern what he, what he wants us to do? So we're just going to talk about that, and might be, you may want to take a few notes, or um, I'm going to have it up on the screen. You can take pictures of the outline. But first of all, let's stand, and let's look at our, let's look at our scripture. Today, we're looking at the Apostle Paul, and he's trying to hear God's voice. He's trying to hear what God wants him to do. Um, so Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Paul and his comp companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. 
During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony in the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening, listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, Come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Okay, you can be seated. So um, this morning, as I said, we're going to be looking at some practical handles that we can get on how we can discern God's voice and direction, what he wants us to do, what he doesn't want us to do. It can be tough to hear the promptings, the direction of God. It's tough enough with um, human relationships, isn't it? Like to, to communicate, to be attentive to each other can, can be a challenge. Um, how many of you guys, especially, I don't you know, you married guys or maybe you guys with girlfriends, um, have been watching a football game? And it's like third and goal, okay? That means... You football, non-football people, that means that they're getting really close to scoring a touchdown, and they get like one more chance. So it's third and goal, or maybe if you're a baseball fan, the bases are loaded. It's the ninth inning, and your team is up to bat. And so if you're, the batter gets a hit, you win the game. So, you know, you're focused. The game, game is on. I don't know, put NASCAR in it, whatever you want. And so, you know, you're, you're kind of watching something, and your wife or your girlfriend is trying to say something to you. I don't know if you guys have ever been in this situation. Um, and you know she's saying something to you. You see her lips moving. Um, you hear a voice speaking. But you have no idea what she's saying. Because, you know, it's third and goal, and the team is about to score. The bases are loaded. And after the play, after, you know, touchdown is scored or the field goal is kicked or whatever, um, she's a little irritated and she's like, did you even hear a word I said? And you're like, yes. I heard everything you said. Because you did. You knew she said, you knew what, that she was talking. You heard the sound she was making. In your ears, it just didn't register in your brain. It didn't get from your ears to your brain. You weren't paying attention. So she comes back to you, and here's where she's got you with the follow-up question. She asks, then what did I say? And then you can man up and say, well, hon, I'm sorry. You know, it was third and goal. They were about to score. The bases were loaded. I wasn't paying attention. I'm listening now. What do you want? And then you know what she says, right? Never mind. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not important anymore. <laughs> and if you know what's good for you, you'll get busy and clean up your snacks or do the dishes or watch the kids for an hour or do something, you know, to kind of get past that. It's hard to pay attention. Even in human relations, relationships, to be attentive to the voice and promptings God, because we can't see him, can be even more challenging, but it's so vital to living the spirit-filled life, which was what we're talking about. So the last two Sundays, we've been focused on Peter, and this morning, we're, focused, we're moving from Peter back to Paul, the great missionary. 
um, he becomes like the main character of the rest of the book of Acts. Three weeks ago, you might remember, we met him on the road to Damascus. He met Jesus. I mean, his life was totally transformed by Jesus. Two weeks ago, we saw Peter led by the Spirit. He meets a lady named Tabitha, raises her from the dead. Um, she makes clothes to serve the poor widows. Last week, Pastor Kevin talked about Peter and how God led him to understand that there's no distinction between Jews and Gentiles, that Christ loves everyone. There's no distinctions. So the Holy Spirit's been working through Peter, but while Peter's been doing his thing, Paul and Barnabas, this other guy, have been out on a mission trip. And they go back to Jerusalem, and they report to Peter and the other apostles that, wow, God has been doing a great work, and many people have been coming to Christ, and Jews and Gentiles have been finding Christ as their Savior, and they come back with this report. The Holy Spirit is really moving. And so now they're ready to head out on mission trip number two. So this is the, the second missionary mission trip. And it's kind of interesting. If you look up in chapter 15, uh, verse 36, Paul and Barnabas actually get into an argument. That kind of reminds us that these are like regular guys, and they didn't always see eye to eye. And uh, here they get into an argument. The argument is about John Mark. And so there was this young guy that Paul and Barnabas had taken with them on their first missions trip, and um, they'd been thrown into prison, they'd been beaten, and John Mark said, I'm going, I got to go home. You know, I can't do this. And so he basically bailed on them. And so Paul is like, we're not taking him with us this time. You know, he bailed on us. And Barnabas is like, but everybody deserves a second chance. You know, he's a young guy, you know, he give him give him another try. And, and they're just like they were entrenched in their positions. And finally, Paul said, well, I'm not taking him. Barnabas says, well, he needs to go. And so Barnabas pairs up with John Mark and Paul teams up with a guy named Silas. And they go their separate ways. These so are like people that didn't always get along. It's good for us to remember that, that the Bible is the story of just like regular people. So um, let's just kind of let's just kind of go through a little bit of the kind of the geography here. We can get that map on the on the screen. So so actually, um, let's see. Well, they started out here. They were down in Jerusalem. They went up through Damascus, and kind of did this land route. And um, inter interesting thing, while well, they stopped in this town called Derby, so this is Paul and Silas. And there was a young guy there named Timothy. And Timothy was following Jesus. And so they invited Timothy to go along with them. It was Paul, Silas, and, and Timothy. And um, then there's something that interesting. I don't know if you probably didn't pick it up in the passage, but in verse 10, Dr. Luke, the physician, is telling, wrote the book of Acts. And uh, instead of saying they did this and they did that, in verse 10 he says, we got ready to leave for Macedonia. So it appears that Dr. Luke kind of jumps in with them. And so it's Paul, Silas, Timothy, and now Dr. Luke is hanging out. So it's these four guys. And uh, so they picked up Timothy right here. And they're, um, they're traveling along. And God was saying something, like, surprising to them. Like, verse 6, um, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. In other words, these guys are on a mission trip. And God is saying, don't tell people about Jesus. It's like, what? These are supposed to be missionaries. Isn't that what missionaries do? Well, yeah, but I don't know. For some reason, God didn't want them to be preaching about Jesus during like this, this first part. So uh, they're, they're here in the, this is like modern day Turkey. And so they're traveling through here and um, so they're thinking, well, maybe we should go north because we've already kind of covered this, this area here. Let's go, let's go north. And uh, it says that they were going to go up here and preach. But it was like there was this prompting from God, and, you know, don't, don't go up there. So like they're, then, then kind of like they're thinking about things, and well, let's see, we've already gone down here in the south, and God said don't go north, and east is home, so let's go west. You know, kind of process of elimination. So they head over here, 
several days' journey to this town of Troas. And that's kind of where our scripture kicks in, kicks in this morning. From Troas, they could like, um, they could get on a boat and go about anywhere, or they could just stay right there and they could tell people about Jesus right there in, in Troas. So that night, though, they're in this bustling port city of uh, Troas, and um, Paul has a vision, a vivid dream, something that was just so clear that it was unmistakably God speaking to him. And it was a vision of a man over here in, uh, this is Macedonia, so it would be like modern-day Greece. Um, and in the vision, the man was like begging him, uh, come over to Macedonia and help us. So that was like God telling them what they were supposed to do. So uh, the next morning, they got the first boat. Well, I don't know when the boat went out, but anyway, they got the next boat out to Macedonia, concluding that God had called them now to begin preaching the gospel um, in Macedonia. And this was like a huge step because now they're moving. Everything else had previously been centered in Asia. But when they go across the Aegean Sea now, they're moving into Europe. So it's new territory that they're moving into with the gospel, gospel of Christ. So let's go ahead and uh, let, me, let me kind of, with that background, let me give you like point number one. So we've already talked about this, but what we want to do in trying to hear and follow the voice of God is, first of all, to just have this daily attitude of attentiveness to God, to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. And this is very simple. It's like every day when you, you know, when you get up and hopefully you collect your thoughts a little bit and at least for a few minutes you, you, you pray and, and you say, um, God, lead me, guide me today. I want to be open to your spirit. Help me to, help me to do that. And, and you can kind of use like morning, noon, evening, bedtime. Those are kind of like some key points. But like maybe at lunchtime, if you're having lunch and you bow your head, I hope you do that before you eat a meal. And, but you include, Lord, guide me, direct me. I want to be open to your voice. Dinner time, bedtime. Just cultivating this attentiveness your spirit. Now, we all got a job to do, right? Or maybe some of you are retired, but, but there's things that demand our attention, but we can kind of cultivate this openness to God, even as we're going about our jobs. Like, we know God's with us, and so we, we try to be attentive to his guidance. Now, let me give you some, I want to move on to kind of this general statement, to like some specific areas, and I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Um, and this is about Everything I know and I believe the Bible teaches about how to be attentive to the Holy Spirit's direction. So, um, first of all, <laughs> I mean, these are like the basics. Like, what does the Bible say? It's a good place to start, right? If you want to know what you should do, what you shouldn't do, um, God's direction in your life, start out with, what does the Bible say? God will never lead you to make a choice that is contrary to his word. So, I don't know, like if you're trying to decide whether you and your boyfriend should move in together, well, you, you look at the Bible's teaching and you will learn that sexual intimacy is a spiritual bonding, a deep sharing of souls that was intended by God to be expressed within a lifelong sacred bonds of marriage. So, the answer is clear, no. You shouldn't move in with your boyfriend. Should I date that girl? Well, that guy. Well, is she a Jesus follower? Well, the Bible's clear. Like, don't be, it says, yoked together with unbelievers. And so we know that we're not talking about, well, we should maybe have friends. We should have definitely have friends with the people who don't know Christ. But, but in terms of those core relationships, there's a different spiritual foundation. So the Bible answer is don't date him. Don't date her if she isn't a Christ follower. God's promptings will never lead you to do something that goes against his word. Okay. All right. So let me get, I'm going through these quickly. The second one is uh, 
This one's a little hard to explain. Tradition or community of faith? The community of faith. So when that, what this means is that when we're reading the Bible, it's not just like, um, oh, this is what this means to me. Like, we have like 2,000 years of wisdom, Christian wisdom. And so we, we seek to understand the scriptures in light of um, biblical teaching down through the centuries. So we have this community of faith. So, like, well, uh, this week, you know, I looked at at least four different commentaries to kind of, what does this scripture mean? What does it mean to us? And, you know, to pray about it and think about it. Because I don't want to just spout my opinion of what it means. I want to know, I want to, I want to, I want to study it. We understand this like with doctors. Who would want to go to a doctor that didn't understand the basics of biochemistry or anatomy and physiology? Like there's a basic knowledge of science that you've got to know if you're going to practice medicine, right? So as followers of Christ, we want to, we want to lean into this, this rich history that we have. And so sometimes it's good. Uh, I recommend everybody has like, have like a good Bible commentary. You know, so you're not just like reading it and say, oh, yeah, this is what it means to me. But we're kind of looking a little bit deeper and digging in a little bit deeper to the scriptures and how it's been interpreted throughout the history of the church. Okay, so having said those things, that's basically focused on the Bible. There's some things the Bible doesn't tell us what to do on, right? Like the Bible won't tell you what college to go to. Uh, the Bible won't tell you like who you should marry or what your career should be. Um, you know, you got to, like, listen to God's direction in some of those specific areas, whether you should buy a car or whether you should make a major purchase. You know, like those kinds of things, you're not going to, I mean, there may be biblical principles, but it's not going to tell you, you know, buy that car or don't buy that car. You're not going to find that in the Bible. There's not even cars in the Bible, right? All right. So let's, this, we're going to go a little bit deeper here. And, um, so closed doors or open doors would be like the next thing. So um, we looked at Paul being converted on the road to Damascus a few weeks ago. And so he was blinded and he turned to Jesus, miraculous transformation. He went into Damascus. He started telling people about Jesus and, you know, people turned to Jesus and it was like an open door. But then word got out and people got mad at him and he had to escape for his life. So, like, that was like a, it was like an open door, and then it was a closed door. <laughs> I mean, if they're trying to kill you and you have to escape your life, that's a closed door, right? Pretty easy to figure that one out. So, we're looking for those opportunities. Um, maybe you get laid off your job, closed door. You receive a, an unexpected invitation, an open door. An old friend calls, an open door. So, God can lead us through that. All right, the next one, here's one. God doesn't want you to be miserable, so pay attention to your desires, passions, and dreams. Um, Psalm 37.4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know, it's not like he wants you to be, have joy in your life and contentment. So he'll place, you know, sometimes those those passions, those dreams, those desires in your life. And what do you love to do? That can be a way that God will lead you. What are you passionate about? What are you good at? Okay. So pay attention to that. All right, the next one. Reason or common sense. This is kind of like God, God gave you a brain. Like, use it, <laughs> Right? So, yeah, it's okay. Um, make lists. What are the pros? What are the cons? What are the reasons this is a good idea? What are the reasons this is not a good idea? You know, list them out. You know, think it through. That's part of what God has given us. He's given us this ability to, um, to reason, to think about it. Um, another one would be like God's inner promptings. Sometimes, I don't know, it's like God kind of puts like your, a thumb in your back. <laughs> you know. So how do you know if it's just like one of those heartburn from pizza or something, you know? 
how do you know what's God and what's, you know, what's persistence? It won't go away. Um, last month, this was kind of a kind of a interesting thing. Last month, I began to feel kind of like a little nudge, and it was kind of a weird nudge. It was like, you should go back to, I, was, I had attended this running club that meets on Wednesday mornings. It was like, it, they shut it down during the pandemic, and it's like a running workout at Hagerstown Community College. And so I began to feel like, because I was able to m meet people who um, don't go to church. So I was like, kind of had this th thumb in my back, and it just like wouldn't go away. It was kind of a, it was kind of a bad time because there was like a prayer group I was a part of of pastors on Wednesday morning. But I got where I felt like I needed to say to those pastors, like I, I feel like God wants me here, and so I said I, I'm not going to be able to come to the prayer group. So I went a few weeks ago, pretty routine. So, I mean, it's the track at HCC, Hagerstown Community College, just right up the road. So I got there on Wednesday morning. It was pretty routine. But then the following week, um, it was really clear that the Holy Spirit was working in the life of one of the women. So here I am, I'm running around this track. And this, this woman is, like, telling me about how she was raised Catholic, but she, she never took her kids to church. And she felt so guilty about that. And so we, we were jogging around the HCC track. And she's like, can you pray the sinner's prayer every day? You know, all these questions. What do you think about prophecy? Um, you know, we, we've been going to this church, but what if the pastor is a false prophet? You know, it's like I'm trying to feel God is working. The Holy Spirit is there in the life of, of this, this woman. And it was kind of like God was saying, this is why I want you here. Because <laughs> I'm working in this, this, this woman's life. Um, so let's, let's go on. So God's inner promptings to listen to that. The advice of a trusted, mature Christian friend or pastor. So you don't have to do this alone. We're not alone. We're part of a community of Jesus followers. You know, we just made an announcement about Crystal. Um, and, and we want to pray for her. Want to, you know, we want to support her. That's why we announced it. Um, because we're part of a community of faith, and that's what we do. We pray for God's direction. And so it's good sometimes just to go to a trusted, mature Christian friend and say, "What do you think? What do you think?" Another one. Um, oh, let's see. Where are we? Oh, okay. Yeah. This, this, this. These are all on the same one. Um, sometimes as we pray, there's like a sense of light. Like God is saying, "Do this." There's light here. It's a little bit hard to describe. We could say, sometimes we say, trust your gut. <laughs> that can be helpful. But what we want is all of these things kind of working together to make good decisions. And sometimes God's will is not either or, but, it, um, but both and. <laughs> it's like there's not, okay, it's this or this. Sometimes there was one time I was praying about moving to another church, and I had there were two possibilities. And looking back, I think I could have gone either place and had an effective ministry. So it's not always either or. And I like this, um, you know, to to be re just relax, not get uptight. Like God will unfold His plan in His timing if our hearts are attentive. I I, I like this quote by Thomas Merton, um, or it's actually a prayer. I believe that the desire to please you, God, does in fact please you. So if I'm listening, if I'm trying to please God, God's pleased by that. Does that make sense? You, you think about it, if you're a parent, and your kids are trying their best to do what they're supposed to do, even though they don't always get it right, you're pleased because they're trying, they're putting forth the effort. And that's what Thomas Merton is saying. I believe that's true about God. So let's go get back to Paul. So Paul has this vision in the night. There's a voice crying out to him, um, begging him to come over and preach the good gospel to them. And so the four missionaries get on a boat, 
And um, let's see, we could go ahead and kind of trace their movements here. Um, they get on this boat at Troas, and they go over to the island of Samothrace, spend the night there, head over to Neapolis, and they hike 10 miles into Philippi, okay, which apparently was where God wanted them to be. That's where That was kind of the destination. Um, so, Paul, when he was going into a city, he would find the synagogue because he was a rabbi and he would be invited to preach in the synagogue and he would tell people about Jesus in the synagogue. So that was like his missionary strategy. Problem was that there wasn't a synagogue apparently in Philippi. There was a group of people that gathered out by the river on the Sabbath. So Paul is like hanging out for a few days and finally um, the Sabbath comes and so he goes out to the river. There's a place of prayer, it says, out there. And it's women. It's all, it's all that the women are out there. And so it says Paul sat down. These ladies kind of gathered around. They're going to have church by the river. Sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? Church by the river. And so Paul begins to explain that Jesus died and that Jesus is risen. And that if you open your heart to him, He'll transform, he'll change your life. Just these ladies, like, sitting around. He's explaining the good news of, of Jesus. There's one lady there. Her name is Lydia. And um, Lydia, we're told, is a businesswoman. It's interesting. We find these different women from different walks of life. And she's seeking to follow God. She was probably a Gentile not a Jewish person, but she was a Gentile who was following in the, in the ways of Judaism, which meant that she believed in the Old Testament, and she was seeking to worship God, not the gods of, of uh, the Romans. And so her heart was open to God, and she shows up at this place of prayer, and she hears about Jesus. And it says that the, God opened her heart to the Lord. She had an interesting business. Her business was uh, there was this expensive purple uh, cloth. And so she was a dealer in this purple cloth. I did a little research on it. And the purple dye came from, does anybody know? What I'm talking about? Snail mucus. <laughs> Gross, huh? <laughs> so they took snail mucus and somehow they boiled it down. And you can imagine how expensive it must have been. And they converted into this purple dye and they made cloth that was in great demand among wealthy people um, in biblical times. So she had this great business going. And, and Philippi was right on the road to Rome. It was like a major trade route. And so she was selling um, these purple, this purple cloth uh, there in Philippi. So apparently she was, you know, she was doing okay with that. She opened her heart to Jesus. And, um, well, that, that kind of leads us to, a, to another kind of major point. A second major point for us is that um, when you're attentive to God and are seeking to follow his promptings and direction, you're, you can be sure the Holy Spirit goes before you. So God was already working in Lydia's life, right? She was a Gentile. She was learning about the Old Testament. She was learning about God of the Old Testament. And so when she heard about Jesus, her heart opened to Jesus. So that's a reassuring to us. Do you know the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of your neighbors? Do you know that the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of your classmates? In the hallways of your school, in the classrooms of your school, the Holy Spirit is working your family members that you're praying for, the Holy Spirit is working. The Holy Spirit was at work in the lady that I ran with at my running club. We call this prevenient grace. It's the grace of God that even goes before people are even saved. I talk to people who um, about finding Christ as their Savior, about their testimonies, and they'll say to me like, you know, before I ever opened my heart and life to Jesus, I knew he was with me. And they'll say, like, even when I was, I knew I was doing the wrong thing, but I had this sense that God was there at work in my life. Sometimes he kept me up at, late, at night because I felt guilty. So Lydia was a woman whose heart was open and responsive to Jesus. 
when he heard about how much Jesus loved her. She opened her heart. She was baptized. I wonder if they had a baptism service right there in the river that, that morning. Her whole family, perhaps even her servants. And then immediately she goes like, hey, why don't you guys come and stay at my house? Can you imagine that? You invite four guys that you just got to know. You know, come to my house. You could stay with me. And we don't know if she had a husband. But there was something inside of her that prompted her to say, I'll be your home base for ministry in Philippi. And it says that she persuaded these four guys to make her home the home base. It's interesting that as we, like if we look at, like Philippians is a book of the Bible, and it was a letter back to this church. And the, the Philippian church became like Paul's favorite. They were the ones that were there when he was in prison to help take care of him, took an offering for him, supported him, prayed for him. It happened because they were attentive. They were following the directions of God, and God was at work in Lydia's life. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to say, that, say this morning, being attentive to God begins with opening your heart and life to Jesus. So this is, this is kind of point number one. This is the starting place. The one thing that you can know that God wants you to do, if you haven't already, is to open your heart and life to Jesus, like Lydia did. So I'd like to just close by asking you a question, all of you. Have you opened your heart? Have you opened your life to Jesus? It was great to hear about Peyton, how God's been working in his young life, how he's been trying to respond at youth group to the promptings of God in his life at a young age. So how about you? Have you opened your heart? Have you opened your life to the presence of Jesus? I'd like to invite you to stand with me, would you please? And we'll ask the worship team to come. Let's bow our heads as they, as they come. Lord, we ask today that you would lead us and help us to cultivate in our daily lives an openness to what you want to say to us, to how you want to lead us, your guidance, your direction. And I pray, Lord, this morning that if there's anyone here this, that hasn't opened their lives to Jesus, opened their hearts to Jesus, that this could be the day when, like Lydia and like Peyton expressed, when they open their hearts to Jesus, forgive me. I want to enter into new life with you. I open my heart, my life to you. I want to begin my journey of following you. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us this morning, that our hearts might be open to the ways you want to lead us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to invite you, if as we sing this song, if you'd like to step out from where you are and you'd like to kneel here and spend some time in prayer, perhaps this would be your day. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus.
may be seated. Heavenly Father, God, we just, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the ways that you are speaking to each one of us, God. And as we just sit down and catch our breath, 
we just ask that you just continue to speak to us. Lord, may we be attentive to the Holy Spirit, to your leadings. And if we haven't heard your voice before, Lord, help us to be in tune with what you're wanting to say to each one of us. We are open to wherever you want to lead us, Lord. So Holy Spirit, move. Continue to move all around us. Lord, we thank you for that provenient grace that continues to go before us and for your Holy Spirit that is living inside of us that's always with us. So Lord, Jesus, we do speak the name of Jesus over everything that's going on in our lives, every situation, every stronghold, God, speak Jesus because Jesus your name is so powerful it can break through everything the darkest darkness God bring your light in make us new refresh us help us to be the people that you want us to be Jesus thank you for speaking to us pray this in Jesus name amen this has been a, a blessing today Right? Every, every day, every day is filled with blessing. It was a blessing that we all woke up today. It's a blessing. It's a blessing that we have sunshine and some warmth. Colorado, they got 11 inches of snow. <laughs> Man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm counting my blessings today. <laughs> blessings of warmth. Uh, this morning, right before uh, service, I saw my son, my oldest son, Carter, was... Uh, is writing on a piece of paper. He's uh, just graduating uh, first grade and is working on his writing. And he wrote this little message that says, I love you, Dad. <laughs> he sent one to Ashley, too. I love you, Mom. It's blessings, right? Today was a blessing to be with you. It's a blessing uh, to have a worship team that's using their gifts to glorify God. It was a blessing uh, to witness Peyton's baptism today and uh, a blessing a deep blessing uh, to hear Pastor Steve's word and the, the way that the Holy Spirit has led him for that message. And I trust that that was a blessing to you as well. So blessing. So um, another blessing, announcements. <laughs> we got, we got some, uh, some good ways to be a part of everything. So first of all, just want to let you know that if you would like to be a blessing and continue to be a part of what uh, God is doing in the life of our church, uh, there are offering uh, Baskets in the back if you want to just go ahead and, and drop a tithing, tithing or a offering in there um, to go to the Lord's work. You are welcome to do that. You can also give online through our website or our church app. And we also uh, just want to remind you real briefly that um, right now after, after we're done with service, uh, Pastor Steve is going to be continuing to lead this uh, series, this class on prayer and uh, practical helps for prayer. And so if you missed last week, he said, come on in. There's, there's room for everyone. So come be a part of that. That will be just right away uh, downstairs in the fellowship hall right after this. So even if you missed the, missed the first week, come jump in, be a part of that. We also, uh, I'm really excited about this. So uh, obviously with the pandemic and everything that's happened the last few years, we haven't been able to get together as much. And so uh, talking about blessings, community is, is a blessing. And so we have an all-church potluck lunch coming up on, uh, after service on June 12th. And so that will be in the fellowship hall, so we hope that you'll come and, and just, bring, just bring a little side or a dish, uh, something to eat, and we'll do it all old school fashion, and whatever God provides, we'll eat up, and we'll, we'll be able to share in some community together. So uh, put that on your calendars. We also, uh, you might have seen the, um, the Christmas tree that's set up out there, and uh, it's filled with flip-flops, and so for Operation Christmas Child this month. Uh, we're still collecting flip-flops, and so um, all different sizes, so it's not just one size fits all for these, for these kids, so bring a variety of them, uh, both boys and girls, and if you want to um, add them to the collection, you're welcome to do that. We also have a women's ministry walking group that is starting up, so if you're a lady and want to get plugged in and con connect with some other, other women in our church, I know they're going to be meeting on Monday, May 30th at 930, and they have some other dates that they, they have planned that's, uh, that's on your your announcement sheet um, if you're interested in that. And we also, last announcement, we also have our VBS coming up this summer, so we're starting to gear up for that, starting to get some volunteers. So if, if you're feeling like God can, uh, wants to use you and you want to you say yes and step in to, 
um, different different ways. There's not just being with kids, though some behind the scenes, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of needs, a lot of ways to step in. So if you are interested in that, you can uh, see Joy Booth and see the sign up sheet um, there in the back on your way out. So um, again, it's been a great blessing um, to be able to worship with each one of you today. Um, a blessing to get to know some new faces, and uh, we're we're glad that you're here as well. So. Um, may we just go, and may we be the church that is attentive to His Holy Spirit every day. Let's, let's start with today. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.